see how quickly we can actually uh, get through it. Perhaps one session, perhaps two. It's a game called, as you may have noticed, What Remains of Edith Finch. An old favorite of mine. That I have been uh, wanting to come back through lately because of... There's a, a Netflix adaptation of uh, Lock and Key that has been going around. And this is not at all similar to that, but it has a vaguely similar theme in that uh, it has an old house filled with many old secrets, and uh, I kind of like that aspect of it. It's not really a magical, mystical, uh, supernatural adventure necessarily, but has some similar themes. I will stop talking now. A lot of this let her do it. Sense to you. And I'm sorry about that. I'm just gonna start at the beginning with the house. I lived here until I was 11 but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. Ahoy again, and welcome back. This is my brother Lewis's funeral. Welcome, welcome to a rather different adventure here we're on. Inner will, my mother left it's me very a good to see you both. Tell me what I've unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know. Or she thought that the mystery would be enough to bring me back. A happy leap day indeed. I completely forgot it was a special occasion. Oh, it's an even more special occasion with new coffee to try. I wouldn't have driven this way in a long time, but I saw a few hoof prints. Hello, my dear. You know me, always passing the buck. Even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. Such a lovely design, so strange. All these towering rooms. This is a game called uh, What Remains of Edith Finch. Just a short storytelling diversion. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. Let me know if that uh, background the music way I couldn't put into words. If the uh, background music is drowning anything out, it's a little loud in my headphones, but I'm hoping it's not on that side. Do let me know. I will happily adjust. Now, Perfect. I Thank you. Old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. Well, those are the words. That's how I would describe it. I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. All right. Looking in, I felt like the house itself had been waiting for me. I'm not gonna fit through there.
Hello and welcome all, and happy Saturday to you, if it is indeed Saturday, and I have not fallen into some sort of time vortex. Crawling through oh, the we've all been here. Be a lot easier when I was eleven. We've all crawled through the doggy door. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. Looks like we must have left in an awful hurry. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. No one's been tending the plants. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it, like a smile with too many teeth. Even the fireplace had a story. Edie told me the bricks came from the original house after it sank. Such an interesting collection of things. There's no real single theme to it. It's like a lot of personal family photographs and then every hobby in the world mashed together. Very, very interesting design. And I'm loving this library. Anything with rolling ladders. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. Uh, getting the question in the chat, is this my first time through the game? I did play once through uh, earlier when it had just come out, but that was many years prior now. Great Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara, along with the rest of the house. A Bigfoot-themed music box. Oh, she must have been in some sort of Bigfoot movie, perhaps? A lot of things got left behind in the whirlwind of that last night. And then this door is like sealed with industrial foam adhesive or something. It is a reverse people inch who ever lived is buried somewhere in the library. Not often you see the old reverse people. Not often it's a good thing. After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. No, oh, it wants me to look into that one, I suppose. I'll bite. My Grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother, Calvin. Like, like literally sharing, sharing the room with his dead brother. I As hope not kid, literally. I just assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. The last time I was in Edith Senior's room, I was ten, and she was painting my portrait. So everyone in the family has their own bedroom with a date that appears to be their birth and death date. 
And it is sealed. They have all... died? Everyone in the family? And she seems to have said that someone told her they're all buried in the library? For some reason. Here's Barbara's room. Barbara was a child star for two years. Until America grew out of it. Strange. Woody's father Odin built the original house. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Classic child we actors. Their four stairs on the night we left. Always stealing the attention away from their siblings. I wouldn't know anything about that. Molly always seemed like a girl I could imagine being friends with if she hadn't died in 1947. Hmm. Small hiccup in the friendship there. We'll get it back on track, no worries. Oh, this is cool. Wave I spent a painted lot of time on the door. Playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. So many interesting things to look at. I hope I'm not giving you all whiplash there. My ooh, what's that? Ooh, ooh what's Lewis that over there? There were secret passages, but I never believed him. Huh, a book with a padlock. Is this where the key works? Strange. Yeah, so my that's mom a was key my mother secrets. left for me. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. Well, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. From the paintings on the wall, it was clear my brother Milton had been here before me. Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan. But I had no idea what was behind that door. Oh, you wouldn't know anything about it either. You had your first role recently at 32. Uh, congratulations. That is no small feat whatsoever. So I am now in Molly's room via a secret passage in the wardrobe. I Molly's room through the peephole. Molly's gerbil had a tiny bedroom with its own even tinier gerbil cage. <laughs> Didn't get much of a look at that, but it was adorable. I should have held it for a moment longer. Being inside for the first time, I felt like I'd stepped behind a painting. So nothing's changed in here since 1947. I got the sense Edie had spent a lot of time here before my mom sealed the doors. December 13th, 1947. Dear diary, I'll be gone soon but I wanted to tell somebody about what's gonna happen. It started when mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was That's starving, how it always starts. So I looked around for something to eat. Oh no, not the gerbil cage. Not, no, no. Oh good, just, just a carrot. The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. How about we go make some pop darts, huh? Mom, can I come out now? Sweetheart, it's late. Go to sleep. 
no Pop-Tarts. My Halloween candy was all gone. Curses. This is not going well. Hey, buddy. I thought about eating Christopher, but I held back. <laughs> Good. Good for you. Don't eat poor Christopher. He's doing his best. I kept eating and eating. Raise your hand if you've ever eaten toothpaste out of starvation as a child. Oh, oh, you can't see. I I'm ate sorry. a lot of things that night. A couple of decorations, some potpourri. Then I heard chirping outside my window. It was a barn swallow going back to her nest. I reached out for her. And suddenly... I was a cat! I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. Mom and Dad didn't even look at me. I'm gonna get this tasty bird! I just got her. I could tell she was getting really tired. Now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. I gobbled her up. And suddenly, I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass. This is a very adventurous bedtime. I'm sorry, my tasty little friend. I swallowed him up, and I didn't chew one bit. Then I flew off to find something. It's a choking hazard. Welcome back. So sorry, I I'm late. I've been uh, transferring myself into an owl over here. She was almost too big to carry. I started choking, but I couldn't stop eating. Twist ending. Here we go. One of those shark in the forest dreams. I rolled off the cliff and into the ocean. Now I was nailed it. figured out the, uh, the camera. I wanted fat, juicy seals. Oh, poor little seal. Oh. I'm sorry, my friend. I tore off her flipper, and it tasted really good. Oh, that's a good flipper. Grabbed on tight. But I was 
was so hungry, I jumped out of the water. When I opened my eyes, everything had changed. Now I was a this monster, is, uh, and I smelled people everywhere. Just to remind you why you may be hearing the soundtrack in the background, it's December 1947. This is like the day before Christmas, if I'm remembering correctly. I was big, but I moved real quiet. Oh, what a lovely moon we have tonight. Mm. And so, I didn't. Time, this I is what you do with a drunken sailor. sailor. And the good smell went into an old pipe. Oh, there's a good smell in this old pipe. I'm gonna get it. Okay. Yeah, pretty much a recurring stress dream of mine right there. There we go. I got closer and closer. I wonder whose bedroom this could possibly be. All my stomach started growling. And suddenly, I was me again. I held my breath for a long time, but I couldn't hear anything. I think it's waiting for me to fall asleep. But it's not going to wait much longer. It needs to be, and we both know, I will be delicious. Okay. I'm gonna put that book down and dial I'm not my sure therapist. I all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. And so ends Molly. <laughs> After which they appear to have put up this safety this trellis. Will be obvious later, but my mom never told me any of these stories. Edie would have, but mom didn't like bringing up the past. Though, when we adopted a stray kitten, she was the one who named it Molly. Here's the room. I spent this a lot is of where time I belong. Great Grandma Edie's room. We have blank canvases and we have a whole lot of yarn. This is the room for me. Oh, there's portraits of birds in all of these, and then in this one there's a portrait of a snake. <laughs> Did she keep a snake in a cage next to all the birds? Because that's fantastic. There's like an iguana. Lovely.
Lewis died a week before we left, but Edie had already started to memorialize him. So every time someone in the family dies, it seems, Grandma Edie, Edie Sr., uh, makes one of these little wood carving and portraits of them. gloves every year, just in time to replace the old ones. So it was only ten years after the house was Maybe built that Molly was died. By a dragon. She could also have said he was building a dragon-shaped slide that collapsed. She could have, but she didn't. <laughs> oh no. One summer, they evacuated the island, but Edie refused to go. For a few weeks, she was a celebrity. And then everyone forgot. I hadn't thought of myself as Edith Jr. for a long, long time. Edie gave a big interview about a mole man living under the Finch house. My mom was furious. <laughs> That's fantastic. Her room was like a museum. All right, Odin, 1880 to 1937. For 500 years, the Finches have been famous throughout Norway for their fortune and misfortune. Odin Finch buries the latest victims of the family curse, his wife Ingeborg and their newborn son, Johan. On January 7th, 1937, he set sail with his family and his house, hoping to leave the curse behind. But 40-foot waves off the coast of Washington send the house and Odin to the bottom of the sea. Yikes. Odin's daughter Edie, with husband Sven and baby Molly, step ashore on their new home, Orcas Island. Which they're allowed to claim for some reason and, and stay there. Odin Finch is the first to be buried in the new family cemetery. His daughter Edie is already dreaming of a new Finch house. That Sven will build in 1937. Interesting. Whatever's wrong with this family, it goes back a long ways. We have been cursed for the better part of a century, it seems. Even in her 90s, sometimes Edie seemed a lot younger than my mother. That's all the cocaine that she was... No, no, that's, that's a vicious rumor. The only trace Grandpa Sam's first wife Kay left on the house was the pink bathroom. It was a pretty big trace. <laughs> I think somehow we, we've all been in this bathroom. I don't know how exactly, but it seems very familiar to me. All right, so that is sealed. Classic work of literature. There's a secret in this bathroom. It's in the last place you would look. It isn't in the cupboard. It's hidden in this book. Neat. Sven gave Sam an old camera he'd refurbished. He never put it down. Mm -hmm. 
Good morning, welcome. You're just in time for exploring the, uh, the back passageways of an old house. Grandpa Sam had a twin. And that he never talked about him. I guess my grandpa didn't like history any more than my mom did. Calvin. 1950 to 1961. It's eleven years old. How I Want to Remember My Brother by Sam Finch. The thing I remember is that when he made up his mind, that was it. My brother said he'd die before he ate another mushroom. And he did. At Barbara's funeral, we swore we'd never be afraid again. And he wasn't. I think Calvin always wanted to fly. Sam! Calvin! Dinner's ready! Coming! But that day, he finally made up his mind to do it. I told him going around was impossible. Maybe if I hadn't said that, Maybe if the wind hadn't picked up. Then maybe he'd still be here. But I doubt it. I think he'd already made up his mind. That's what I want to remember about my brother. Calvin's story felt strangely familiar. When I was younger, I remember trying to do the exact same thing. It's very strange how they strike this balance. <laughs> yeah, I've got something in my eye. It's strange how they, uh, they strike this balance between the absolute tragedy of it. It's really quite After sad, tomorrow, you know? Edie roped off Calvin's half of the room. Many, uh, many different uh, children of young ages having accidents is is nothing to. Mom said, "Grandpa Sam and find beauty in, in, and yet somehow they have found it." It's sort of a a casual coming to terms with these tragedies in sequence. So lovely. The passages were a pretty tight fit. They'd obviously been built for smaller hands and bellies. Aha, this must be a shortcut. Yeah, shortcut back outside. Barbara's room there. Let's see if we can get into it. Growing up, I always thought of Barbara as a child star. I 
I never thought about how hard it must have been for her afterwards. Forty-four to nineteen sixty. Of all the stories people wrote about Barbara's death, I'm surprised Edie saved this one. Old Jack here with another ghastly tale inspired by America's most unfortunate family. I'm calling it the surprise ending of Barbara Finch. As a child star, Barbara was famous for her scream. Now at 16, Shout out to the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> yes, indeed. Been. But in a lucky break, she'd been asked to perform her signature scream at a local convention for monster movie fans. It was just the boost her career needed. Unfortunately, her scream hadn't aged well. <laughs> Getting better. I think you just need the right motivation. Her biggest fan and current boyfriend, Rick, was about to demonstrate when... <laughs> now that was a great scream. It was Barbara's father, Sven. He'd slipped into a table saw and had to be rushed to the emergency room. So Barbara got stuck babysitting her youngest brother, Walter. Her convention comeback was canceled. <laughs> okay, I'm hearing frustration, but I'm not hearing terror. What if I tried... A gang of hoodlums and Halloween masks have been terrorizing Orca's Island tonight. Police are urging residents to... To what? You're right! What are we also, urged to I do? I loved your delivery on that. Why is your basement door locked? Because my dad likes making puzzles and secret passages. There's a key hidden in the music box. The secret is to oh. keep winding and winding until finally the key pops out. Thanks, babe. I've Don't seen that music thing. box. 20 minutes later, Rick hadn't returned. So Barbara went to look for him. Right on. But why? Why go look for him? He's finally. He finally got rid of him. And as she wound the key, she listened for Rick. But the house was silent. Great reference. She found Rick's crutch and imagined the worst. Okay. The gang's leader is the infamous Hookman Killer, Dr. Carl Hamill, who impaled and then ate his family ten years ago tonight. I never eat anything before I impale it. Take that, Rick! Rick? Barb, relax. I was just trying to scare you to help you find your scream. Well, I'm not scared, Rick. I'm furious. Then act furious. All I'm getting from you now is that you're hurt and confused and you She threw him out, but she kept a little something to remember him by. Barb! His legs. See my other crutch? And she was still holding it when she fell asleep watching the late, late picture show. Hours later... Barbara! Walter, what's going on up there? Ah! Okay, I'm coming up, but if this is a trick, you're dead, Walter. This is one of your classic Walter pranks. Walter, are you there? Walter, I vanished. But he 
his bedside radio was still on. Orca's Island police describe the man as six feet tall with a steel hook for a hand. Residents are urged to lock all doors and windows and notify the police of any suspicious activity. I returned, saw the hook man, and was speechless. He was completely speechless. Smashing. <laughs> Right in the bread basket. He, was. he couldn't get enough of Barbara. Okay, Barbara. There's got to be another way out of here. Not right. She played her part beautifully. Molly, you're I didn't do all She listened for his breathing, but all she heard was... <coughs> At the door, she heard whispering. It was coming from inside the house. murdered all of you. You have no idea how close you came to dying. I made Molotovs. This was serious. monsters they were, and she realized what was about to happen. She was going to be famous. And with her final breath, Barbara Finch gave the performance of her life. I wasn't there myself, but I hear Barbara was magnificent. Poor girl. She had a taste for stardom. But unfortunately, so did her fans. Of course, the police blamed it all on poor Rick, who disappeared. Poor Rick? Night. What? And He's clearly Walter? responsible. Hiding under his bed the whole time. He took it all pretty hard. But that's another story. As for Barbara, tucked inside the music box is all they ever found of her. Her ear. Now that's what I call a real eerie tale. <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. That final Eden cover page is was to be perfect. As absurd as that comic was, maybe what Edie saw was a happy ending. So that one is a little weird. Like, from the other deaths, we can assume perhaps Molly poisoned herself and hallucinated that she was a shark. Perhaps Calvin fell off the cliff in a swinging accident, but what happened to Barbara exactly? What are we supposed to take from that? Was she actually killed in some sort of home invasion? Or are we just supposed to take that she was uh, uh, slightly depressed at her, I guess now I know shall I say, has-been like status? I don't know what we're supposed to take. So that was back on the first floor? Must be. Yeah, 
guys, here it is. And so we have access to the basement. Ah, perhaps she just disappeared along with her boyfriend. Yes, that could be... That could be a way to read it, for sure. This loses something without the Halloween theme. But still a lovely basement. Mom said the basement was off-limits. Unless I wanted another tetanus shot. How many tetanus I've shots have I had already? Once, carrying packages. I thought maybe she was hiding presents. It turned out she was hiding a lot more than that. I remember asking Mom once about where Walter had gone. She said after Barbara died, he got as far away as he could. If there's a pattern in all these stories... I think it's that none of us has gotten very far. So he lasted uh, quite a while. I think it's 2010 when they left the house, so he died five years before then. Goodbye, everyone. I can't believe I've been down here for 30 years. On that first day, after the shaking started, I didn't think I'd survive a week. But after a few days, I settled into a routine. That's what kept me sane. Having a schedule, living for today. I always expect it to be dead mm, tomorrow. Peaches. But if you wait long enough, you get used to anything. And from 1968 to 1976. Even a monster on the other side of the door starts to feel normal. Almost friendly. And then one day, everything just stopped. 2005. Whatever that thing was, it I've was got gone. liver spots. Maybe it got tired of waiting. Or maybe I just got tired of being afraid. It's been a week now. The longest in 30 years. I'm done waiting. I have to leave while I still can. and eating koala o's 
apparently. Now it's out there somewhere. Whatever killed Barbara and Molly. And Calvin. This must be my trash pit. Maybe this is all a mistake. But I need to stop living the same day. Even if it kills me. So cool. Whatever's out there, I want you to know I'm ready for it. I'm going to appreciate all of it, especially the food. I don't mind if I only have a year left, or a month, or a single week. I'd be happy with one more day. I can already imagine the sun on my face. Hmm. That's rough. Walter died when I was six. I can't believe my mom never told me he was down here. So he was so afraid of the curse that he just hid himself away for 30 years? And on the very day he stepped outside, immediately hit by a train. Is that a curse? Or is that just, wow, you really shouldn't have been walking on the train tracks? I'm sure my mom was trying to protect me. There's no way to train for that. Oh! <laughs> Maybe she was afraid I'd end up like Walter. It's hard to be in a cursed family. Uncle under the house. It's hard to know what to do about it. I can only imagine what else she was hiding. I don't want to make the same mistakes she made. Trying to bury something that's still alive. <sighs> now that there's only one of us left, or maybe two. Oh yeah. The uh, the interview she gave about a mole man living under the house. You're right. That's that's probably a reference to the uncle. I thought it was time I heard the stories. I'd myself. never made that connection before. And found out what happened. That's why it's lovely to play these games with you folks. But now I'm worried the stories themselves might be the problem. Maybe we believed so much in a family curse, we made it real. I don't know if I should even be writing this. Maybe it'd be better if all this just died with me. But I thought you should know about your family. And the history you're a part of. Whoa. What's that? Maybe that's the ruins of the old house out in the middle of the lake or something? Though, to be honest, I feel as lost as you probably do right now. 
I think the people in these stories believed them, for what that's worth. Back up to the house. And when you look at the house, at that history of imagination and stubbornness and madness, any of it seems possible. I think we've been surrounded by death for so way. long, we've just gotten used to it. What kind of family finishes building a cemetery before starting the house? It's embarrassing for me to admit this, but... The pet cemetery may be more uncomfortable than the human one. No, that's fair. Three of the gerbils. No, we all feel that way. Two had been my fault. It was Burpy and Chirpy, wasn't it? Derpy and Derpy Jr., they met their own end. But Burpy and Chirpy, that was you. Furpy, Lurpy, and Zerpy all just died of natural causes. That was nothing to be done about that. I want to know what this frog's name is, but his placard has fallen. Oh well, mystery frog. Sven built the house, but it was Edie who designed the cemetery. Oddly well placed, Moon. That's amazing. So she died in 2010. I wonder if that's why we actually left. Or as part of it. Oh, that's adorable. Little kitty cat who flew. I'm sure Odin's monument had been Edie's idea. My mom was always trying to move on, but for Edie, the past never went away. She could see it poking out of the water at low tide. Yeah, here we go. Our curiosity will be sated. Edie said she dreamed about the old house every night. I feel like I must be missing something there, but I'm not sure. Maybe they just wanted me to know it's out there? For some reason? Edie's side was always easier for me to understand. But the older I get, the more I can see where my mom was coming from. Her dad had been pretty strict, but it wasn't enough to save her brothers. She was just trying to do better. She lost two of her brothers, just like I did. I get why she tried so hard to protect us. We never found Milton's body, so my mom insisted we were putting up a monument, not a tombstone. It 
Yes, absolutely. The uh, comment in the chat, the world building in this game is fantastic. It really is amazing how quickly they bring you in to the world and the curse and all of that. I tell you with such There's so many things intimate and personal wanted. stories. Part of me thinks this is what she wanted all along. For me to come back someday and find everything out for myself. Looking back on it now, if she told me there was going to be so much climbing, I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. She's kind of been hinting about that. This is your family that she's speaking to, perhaps, a child. And she's leaving this record for you. Because she doesn't know if either of you will survive whatever this is. There must be some I element of Sam, but I wanting think not to believe any of this for your own child's sake. But constantly worrying, regardless. They were both pretty intense. I was totally going to make the exact same comment, yeah. Uh, again, from Von Legaya, if that is how you pronounce it, likely not. <laughs> Not taking anything from the actress in the game, which I completely agree with, she is fantastic, but I think Jessica McAvoy would have been perfect for this. Again, I agree, she would have been absolutely fantastic. And I actually imagine that my good friend Jessica McAvoy is, uh, is narrating this as I play through. Which is likely creepy, but that's what I do. Because I, I want the best for her. Sam spent his life and this is others, awesome. But Mom said he got nervous being in front of the camera. I guess we're all afraid of something. And go follow her on Twitch. Nudge nudge. Okay, Sam. 1950 to 1983. What do you have for us, sir? Dawn, I promise, you'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are going to last a lifetime. Mm hmm Am I going to have to shoot anything? It's a hunting trip, Dawn. Shooting is strongly encouraged. Weekend, isn't it? I will never forget this weekend, Dad. That's the spirit. A national park named after our great grandfather? That's interesting. There's nothing Smile, secret hidden around. Okay, got it. I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. You're right, Dad. It's starting to clear up. It's still freezing, though.
probably should not have drunk all that coffee. Hmm. Oh no. Well, still while I take a picture of you. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> That's a keeper. It's not the right time. I'm just saying, I'm not always gonna be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was gonna be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. Dad! Good eyes, Don. I'm not sure what I want to focus on. All of it. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of you. Dad, I... Just breathe. Turn off your imagination. Let me get behind you. Do I have to do this? Don, you don't have oh. to do this. But if you want to survive, you need to be strong. Keep yourself squared up, elbows down, like we practiced. Whenever you're ready. Great That's shot, so Don. Sad. <laughs> you're a monster, sir. <laughs> Selfies at such I'm a time. Proud of you, Don. Always remember that, okay? Still in control. Sorry, Don. Just gotta reset the timer. <laughs> Dad, it, it's twitching. I think That's it's totally so normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about. Dad. Oh! stories, that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me. That one is rough to get through. It's a, a strange combination of emotions all at once. Instead of Pardon hiding me. from death, Sam seemed to go out of his way to meet it. I like how they all have a different plan. <laughs> they all have a different way of addressing the curse, of meeting it head on, or hiding, or pretending it doesn't exist, or thinking about it too much, obsessing over it. And yet they all end up exactly the same way. As will we all. One day. How's your Saturday going? H having a good time? Happy? Thinking about life? Making a... Uh, making a nice cake for later? That'll be great. It's gonna taste good. After Sam died, Part my mom and Edie got really theatrics. Close. They'd both lost a lot. That's why the flavor of that cake matters so much. It's so fleeting. Okay. 1976 to 1977. Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. He's 
saw things the rest of us don't. Distracted Hello? at such a time. Sam, I told you I don't want to talk right now. I wonder what he saw. What his world was like. Lovely and so horrifying. I assume you're in control of the frog, yes. That is a safe assumption. I seem to be. You mean I'm not controlling it? This whale in play? No, exactly. I must need to go through the middle of the ducks to get. There we go. Sure made him happy. Silly it sounds. But I worried about a baby being too happy. But I can feel him slipping away. Sorry about that, Gregory. I know you did everything you could. Maybe if I hadn't called that night. Hold on, I don't want Gregory to hear this. I wish you could have told us about the world we saw. Sam. <laughs> Seems neither of us, neither me or Edith, can think of anything to say about that one. It's very interesting to me that they uh, address that one so colorfully, so I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry and yeah, <laughs> childishly, almost, you know, from the perspective. Wow. 
complete the routine. Alright, what happened to Gus? 1969 to 1982. A poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. My father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I I now pronounce you husband and wife. You make this cry. came, Dad ordered him to come so interesting. But Gus declined, and as a sign, held up his middle finger. The wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. Wind's picking up. Then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, Make the music louder. I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't, until we found you. She never talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. Oh, thanks. Really glad you told me that. Sometimes you're just standing in the wrong place too close to a tent. It's not really your fault. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. At the time, it was as far away as she could get. More pregnancy climbing. Evermore. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. Give me 
just one moment here. I'll be right back with you. So sorry. I am back amongst the mint in time. And to see kids in the house again. Always on the lookout for these little miniatures. They seem to be scattered all over the place. Oh wow, and these are all like painted with little skylines. So many tiny details. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> One quick cry so hard you have a headache. I, I'm very sorry if that had anything to do with what we're, uh, we're going through here. I'm adding to the emotional torrent. Uh, the house torrent. a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. Yeah, it's like there is nowhere you can turn in this house where you won't be reminded of a recently deceased loved one. You can see the cemetery from here. You can see the old house where Odin died. You can see everyone's memorials and sections and things carefully cordoned off and shrouded in tradition and ritual. In the name of Remembering them, I suppose. In the name of honoring them. But what does it really do to while, those who are left alive? Good. Almost normal. But it didn't last. The beginning of the end was Milton's 10th birthday, when Edie gave Careful him the castle. Now. I guess I'll be going there later here. Let me continue the way they're directing me. After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. So he doesn't have a death date, as far as they know. He's not dead, just missing, I guess. Well, back up now. <laughs> Let's try a little breaking and entering. I really like this door. sort of a home, I would put it up in it. <laughs> Lovely little elevator. Especially for the pregnant. I don't know how 
old he was when he went missing. Looks to be perhaps 11 or so. Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. disappeared. Disappeared in 2003, maybe? So he would have been 11, I guess. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room until mom got him a job at the cannery. And then he spent more and more time at the cannery. Because he had to. It was mandatory. This is a happening Lewis's spot. Smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. Smelled like shisha and video games, apparently. Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. Mm. He kept working at the cannery. But he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... Wonder. Oh, wow. So now I'm playing... I'm playing this exploration dungeon crawler up here. While I'm playing this with the other stick. That's super interesting. So your mind is literally wandering. I asked him to describe as you're doing this. He said he started small. Imagining a labyrinth. feel his way about. Then something moved. 
bats and toads. Things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. Amazing. I then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Like a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It it's taking over more of my reality. He told me he'd made a new friend. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. And songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. But Who needs to speak when you got this much ever. going on? Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he won. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. Conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Louisville. St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Minneapolis until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a Gotta check out this beautiful prince. Beautiful prince. The prince was on his own quest for radiant rainbows. Radiant rainbows. He 
followed the sound of his. Oh yeah. Electric sitar. Oh, I missed. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. Now it's completely gone. <laughs> I have no reality. He knew the world was all in his imagination. But he was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. Hello and he welcome. Struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping sand, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. began to despise the man with a royal contempt. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder, Palace would be packed with his companions. Including the wise Calico who insisted on advising. What a wise Calico. Dear Molly is. Your son was a kind man Happy who would be missed by all of us who knew him. Ouch. <laughs> My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. He was really cool.
Yeah, I, uh... I know how that feels. A little too, uh, too well. Such a On the way back, beautiful way of putting it. My mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come Literally. Sooner. It's been staring at us from the middle of the lake for over a hundred years. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific. I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last- I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. I have been excused. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. That thing you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning, okay? You're, you're just coming back after a, uh, a brief break for coffee. Yes, you only missed quite a bit of decapitated salmon and a lesson about escapism that uh, cut me deep to the marrow. But that's all. Dear Edith, Nothing important. There's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. 
They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. You know, I've seen that house every day of my life. Seemed to be. Uh, question is. So sorry. Uh, question is, I assume a hand was lost in some form of fish chopper related injury. It seemed to be more of a uh, guillotine situation. I regret to inform you. When the fog rolled in, distracted to I the point of guillotining. I got turned around. I started seeing things. There was a lovely spray of confetti. Things I'd forgotten that did make it better. ever existed. things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and... Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! I Come on screen, now. But Mom dragged me to the car. Now I'm never gonna know the truth. I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. The next morning, the band came to pick her up, but she was already gone. After that, we moved around a lot. We both so tried to make the best of it. Amazing little nostalgic touches. Like, have you ever been able to do this in a game? A few years went by. But everyone has done that. It's so interesting. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> the rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while. And then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. This journal was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you and tell you all these stories myself. But I guess if you're reading this now, things didn't work out that way. This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. 
I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. such a lovely game and a lovely story. I hope I actually saw all of them. I, I don't know if I filled all the slots in my family tree or not. I hope we can double check. suppose we're left to wonder, is her son now facing a similar problem, walking through the wreckage of his, his legacy, trying to figure out what makes sense to him, and wondering when he's going to die, if he's going to die, if any of it is true. It is, yeah, I'm playing it on Xbox now. I'm sure it's available elsewhere, too. I think it originally came out on PC. <laughs> I'm so sorry you died a bit inside with this game. I, I'm very sorry. I hope that it's a, a part of you. You can come to terms with losing, um... I feel responsible here, like a, a murderer of hopes and dreams. <laughs> Absolutely, it's definitely worth a, a personal playthrough to be in, in control of the experience. All the little pieces and emotions, even something just as small as that, you know, putting your hand out the car window and surfing, you know, you're in, in control of and can experience in a strange way. It's very therapeutic to dive into those nostalgic moments. So sorry I've been so silent throughout this playthrough. There have not been many, uh, many witty interjections because I've been keeping my various fluids in my, uh, my eyeballs or trying desperately to. So yes, I, I do apologize if I have uh, derailed your emotional day. I hope that we were able to find some beauty amongst the, uh, the sadness there. I certainly did. There's a lot to love and a lot to be curious about. A lot of mysterious secret passageways and things. So I must have gotten all of the, the illustrations here. I'm glad it showed us. You can
can now replay any individual story, any individual family member's death, or start a new game from the beginning. I'm just looking them over here. I'm trying to think of what might be my... my personal favorite. It's likely Lewis. That, uh... I don't know what I'm feeling about Lewis. <laughs> I've been in that position where everything is so difficult or so monotonous in my life that I require escape, that I require belief that maybe I'm not actually living the life I think I am, that I may be off somewhere else doing something more important. And I'm sure I have lost myself completely at times in those journeys. And it's so strange kind of watching his experience and knowing that it's it's sort of trying to say, don't don't do this, you know, don't get distracted, live your life, be present, be, be present for the beautiful moments. If you get distracted, you may hurt either yourself or others. <laughs> and yet there's something enticing about it, inviting and right about it, you know, as he's walking through the throne room with everyone cheering his name. You get this little primal swell of correctness. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. It's like, yeah, this is this is how I should be treated. This is where I should be. People should be shouting my name. I have a lot to offer the world. And to know that it's all kind of in your head. And that you may have things to offer the world, but none of them are here in this fantasy. But that it's sort of required for your own survival, your own mental health to live it out every once in a while. No, so these the thoughts that occur to me, at least. Likely not uh, anything they're trying to push across, but my own overthinking. So, hopefully that is uh, enough of an overview for now of the game. If you do want to pursue it, on your own time, please do. It is lovely, it is moving. It has many moments of fun, you know, little references to Halloween and things like that, or the Crypt Keeper. It's got a lot to offer. I, I love this game. And I love all of you, and thank you for joining me on a bit of a more somber adventure this morning. We'll get back to the uh, the sword play and the headshots and the the witty and saucy commentary, I promise. And there is more of that. Oh, these are some lovely, lovely thoughts in the chat. I am very, very grateful to be with you all and to have shared this experience. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And hopefully I will be back soon, at the very least, tomorrow morning. I hope, with uh, with some more fun. Thank you for bearing with me here, and I will uh, see you again soon for another adventure. Do not succumb to the curse or to the paranoia thereof. You are alive, as are we all, and that is your invitation. <laughs> that is all you will ever need to provide. Just to be alive, just exist. And we will uh, make it through this world together. Goodbye for now, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>